Tell you what, friends, this log is covered in this stuff. It's everywhere. I want to make sure on this side of the log, I do trim off the ivy. I'm not concerned with the rest of it because the carriage of the saw head passes on the rail right here. I don't want any of these vines to get tangled up in the carriage or maybe even go in down to the battery box and cause some problems. So every time I flip this log today, I'll come over here on the drive side of the sawmill and get these things kind of trimmed back just a little. Just enough where I can pass the carriage down through here and not touch anything. All right, friends, welcome back to the sawmill. I got most of this cleaned off on this side. I'll tell you what, guys, this log is a mess, but underneath all this English ivy is gonna be some really nice lumber. And this is English ivy for you guys not familiar with it. It's not poisonous or nothing like that. It won't hurt you, but it does make a mess on trees. On the sawmill, this is an ash log. It was dead standing. The emerald ash borer killed this tree. If you're not familiar with that, there's an emerald ash borer. It's like a beetle. It's killing all the ash trees in this country, guys. Probably in the next 10 to 20 years, it'll probably get every one of them if I had to guess. Now this log is an eight footer. Let's check the diameter real fast. I think it's around 23, 24 inches. Let's see right here on the operator's side. Actually, 25 inches. Good deal. Pretty good size log there, guys. I got about 1,200 board feet total, and this right here came from a tree service. So this was a residential area. It was dead standing, so the benefits of it being a tree are gone when that happens. You got no foliage, no shade, no erosion control, nothing like that. So you wanna get rid of it, especially when it does something like this and it dies, because sooner than later, guys, it's gonna fall over. It's going to happen sooner than later, so if you have one near structure or anything like that, guys, get rid of it, get it taken down for two reasons. The first reason for safety, you don't, you know, even if it's in a field, you could be driving by or walking by and it falls on you. So safety is the first reason. The second reason is the sooner you take it down, the better and get it to a sawmill because there's still going to be some decent lumber in it if it's not been dead for too long. Even though the beetles have killed it and are probably still in it, you'll probably be able to salvage some decent boards out of it. And there's also a lot of good firewood that comes from ash. Ash has an extremely low moisture content, so it doesn't take it long to air dry for lumber and also dry for firewood. Now today we're gonna to be sawing this in six quarter on the thickness. Hopefully here in about a year or so, maybe sooner than that, we'll have some nice blanks for tool handles, for axes, for hammers and stuff like that. Ash is a really good tool handle. I think hickory is the best. Ash is probably the second best as far as that goes. I could do four quarter lumber, but due to all the ash being harvested in the mountains in this area right now, the lumber market is really saturated with four quarter ash. It goes for about two butts a board foot kiln dried. So there's not a good market right there. But if I do six quarter and cut these into handle blanks for ax makers and just hobbyists, I'm gonna have a better, uh, strategy, I guess is the better word, I'd have a better strategy on how to market this lumber once I sell it.
All right, friends, that went pretty good. Got most of the vines off of it, got it squared up. Now we can see what we're sawing. I was going kind of slow when I was making those passes because I couldn't really see where the bark was. So two quick things here, and I'll show you guys my strategy and how I'm going to saw this up. The first thing is, I must have hit something in the bark. I messed up the set of the teeth just a little. I got blade tracks the whole length right here. And I didn't hit any metal. I didn't hear nothing like yet. I think these little vines that were on the bark are really dense and it must have somehow messed up the blade just a little and messed up the set of the tooth. It's still sawing okay. I've cut the cameras off. I made one more pass and everything's cutting just fine. I'm gonna leave that blade on there for now as long as it's cutting fine. I really don't care if there's a little bit of a track mark on here because once this is kiln dried, it would go through the molder and it won't matter then anyways. What you wanna be sure of though is that everything is dimensionally sound. So as long as everything's still flat and it's sawing good, I'm gonna leave it on there. And the other thing is, guess what saw blade I'm running today? Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. I get those from Joe down in Georgia. If you guys want those blades, give him a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. I cover that in every video because I get questions about that all the time and even emails. So, if you guys out there looking for blades, give Joe a call. I'm gonna bring the camera in here and show you guys the way we're gonna saw this up. All right, friends, I'll use my measuring tape as my pointer here. Now, some may look at this and think to themselves, why are you not sawing with that crack right there? Well, I'm sawing for a certain grain pattern, and if I follow that crack right there, I won't obtain that. So right here, we have the pith, and we got that cornered out, and this right here will probably be firewood when we're done sawing. So we're gonna flip it up and focus on this part because the way the grain is running, you can see the Sharpie, I did my best right there, guys, look over me. That's the way the grain is running and we'll be able to get some really nice proper ax handle blanks out of that by the way the grain is running. So we'll come down through here and flat saw it and get close to this little corner right here, but probably stop around this heartwood where the color starts to change. And then we'll flip it up again and saw from the bottom and judging by the way the grain is running on that, we'll get some extra axe handles from this bottom right here. So a pretty good yield out of a log that would have ended up in the landfill if I wouldn't have took it more than likely. Thank <laughs> you. 